Ladies and gentlemen, this is the brilliant Ivo Graham! My, um, I had to get away from my mother. She used to use long car journeys as an excuse to have very awkward conversations with me. Conversations that you'd never have at any other time, but in the car you're trapped, the central locking goes down, and my mother turns to me and says things like she genuinely said last year, could you explain to me, Ivo? She'd read about them in the newspaper. I'm sure we all understand how they work, but she'd never understood. Could you explain to me the concept of the your mum joke? Now, we all know how these work. Again, these should be your favourite Spang audiences. This is, the kind of, this is the kind of level we're used to, basically. When with a group of quite laddie friends, it's hilarious to, uh, to imply that one has had sexual intercourse with a member of one's friend's mothers. <laughs> My mother had never heard of this. She had no idea. She said, Ivo, can you explain this to me? I said, no, I tried to change the subject. She wasn't going to let it go. She said, come on, are you going to fill me in? I said, that's what your mum said. <laughs> if, um, and if anything, that confused her more, if I'm honest. Uh, I thought, very clever demonstration of the art. She didn't go for it at all. I had to drop the act and explain it more seriously for 20 minutes. At the end of it, she sighed. She went, wow, that's a lot to take on board at any one time. I said, that's what your mum said. She was... <laughs> The ways of becoming more triumphant and less abusive. This, is, this can only be seen as progress. Um, I thought... Um, I think... I think I think we'll refer to that as a shared victory. Is that fair? Is that fair? I have a difficult family. I have a younger brother who's significantly more confident and masculine than I am. He's, uh, he's 17 years old and he's very good with women, but too good. Displays that very sort of laddie overconfidence with women. I'm sure we're all familiar with the lad stereotype. They're people who play rugby, drink a lot of beer, throw things into bins from great distances and high-five each other. These kind of people. And I don't want to... I don't want to knock lads. I'm sure we've got a few in tonight, and I want to say that's fine. Many of my best friends have woken up with lads that they don't remember meeting the <laughs> night before. <laughs> But um, my brother's become too confident. He's got skills that I didn't have at his age and I still don't have now. I realized this about a year ago. I was on the social networking site Facebook quite late at night, um, skimming through the holiday photos of girls with open profiles. And I, um, <laughs> I, I am joking, of course. I'm not that lonely and pathetic. I was take, <laughs> taking a quiz to see which Disney character I would be. And, uh, <laughs> which I'm sure we can all agree is a far better use of my time. I finished the quiz. As I was logging off, I noticed that my brother had commented on a photo of himself. It was a photo that I'd taken him about a year before for his first ever profile picture. Hadn't created a massive media buzz at the time, but then recently some girls have written comments underneath it. Hilarious, sort of very flattering comments, all things like, oh, Ludo, it's a very cute picture of you. A very hot picture, laughing at my brother's name. That's good. <laughs> any, any victory is a victory. But <laughs> when, when can I see you next? It was these were the kind of comments he was getting, and that was fine. I didn't begrudge him the attention. I was only a bit disgusted by his comment in response. He just written underneath, girls, girls. I don't think you should ever start a sentence with girls, girls. <laughs> Unless you're some kind of Serbian pimp. Uh, <laughs> he just written, uh, girls, girls. This photo was taken a year ago of me when I was much younger and much cuter, but uh, flattered to see you're still interested. Peace. Now, <laughs> I don't know what we think now. I'm sure we can all agree with the concept of peace. That it is generally a good thing. But I, I thought I was... It was being misused. It was, it was too common. It was too slimy almost. But then again, I had to admit, maybe, maybe that's how it's done. I, at the time, admittedly was tired, frustrated, angry, if anything, to find out that I'm apparently Mulan, Oriental warrior with a dark feminine secret, <laughs> which, which is a character that no 19-year-old boy wants to be. And I, um, I went to university from school. I was a very nervous character at school, and I went to an all-boys boarding school, which doesn't really help you to develop or mature as a man. Friday nights, I'm sure most of you spent your Friday nights as a teenager. You go out, you get drunk, you have your first adult experiences. I spent my Friday nights with um, about eight other students, uh, all boys, sort of participating in something called the Historical Board Game Society. <laughs> now, there's some laughter there. I'm not going to stand here and knock the Historical Board Game Society because uh, that would be a very disloyal thing for a former vice president to do. But um, <laughs> all I'll say is it's not the best environment to... Um, not the best environment to grow up in. We were, you know, we were having fun. We were having fun pushing boundaries, mainly Austro-Hungarian ones. <laughs> there we go. Come on. <laughs> and what was most important, we had a great teacher. We had a brilliant teacher, a man called Mr. Stevens. He was a brilliant man. I'll give you one detail about Mr. Stevens. He was 11 years old, by which I don't... He wasn't actually 11 years, of course. That would be ridiculous. But he was born on February the 29th. 
I'm not sure if, it, if we've ever met anyone with a leap year birthday. They're awful people. What they like to do is make up for what they've lacked over the years in affection and presence by going on and on hilariously about what a quarter of their age is. <laughs> this is the leap year strategy. Mr. Stevens would always say to us, boys, boys, you wouldn't guess it to look at me, boys, you wouldn't guess it to look at me. I'm actually 11 years old, boys, I'm 11 years old. So it's, so it's not illegal. Um, <laughs> if, uh, if, if anything, you're abusing me. Um, you, you can fault his morals, but you can't fault his logic. Anything at all can be turned by lads at university into a drinking game. Even, even the, the Euros last month, we all had to watch the Euros, but not just watch the Euros and enjoy the football, play the Euros drinking game, a shot of vodka every time someone scored. I didn't like this. I thought it was a bit much, but I wanted to, I wanted to participate to go along with the guys, so I went along to Tesco with them. They all got their vodka. I got myself a multi-pack of yogurt. Now... <laughs> It doesn't sound like it should make sense. Basically, there's quite specific rules to this game, but it can be a lot of fun. Basically, whenever the German player Muller took a corner, I'd um, <laughs> help myself to one of those. That's a, that's a, that's a classic comedy tip. If you've, if you've bogged them down a bit in Thatcher and paedophilia, then throw in a quick yoghurt gag to single out uh, the innocent ones. Hello, this is Dead Parrot, and we are here at the Edinburgh Festival at Spank, because you love it. We're here with Eva Graham, who's just had a very lovely set at Spank. How did you find that? I found it wonderful. <laughs> I, I, uh, it was rowdy. You've done quite a few Spanks now, haven't you? Uh, yes, I have done. Uh, did a couple last time, last year, and uh, this is my second this year. And the most challenging. The most challenging. <laughs> but, uh, Do you think Spank is one of the most challenging rooms? I think so, but I think that's part of being a comic, isn't it? That's yeah. what people are most excited about when you say you do comedy, they go, what are your worst tickles? What have been your drunkest people? And like, well, I performed at Spank in uh, August 2012, and um, it was mental. So you've done quite a few Edinburgh's now. What are your Edinburgh survival tips? Um, well, we're about halfway through this run, and it's all right so far. Get a nice bed. Nice bed. I know that's a really big cliche, but um, I'm on a floor this year, and uh, it's not working. It's not working at all.